Okay, so some of you guys have seen some of my pictures that I posted online and had questions regarding my new wheels. Well, this is the video where I talk about those new wheels. It's gonna be later on, but I wanna start with focusing this video on how you can increase your range and efficiency on your electric vehicle. I'm gonna to talk to you about what I did to increase both those and what you can do as well. So let's get into it. Okay, so electric vehicles tend to focus a lot on efficiency, and that's because battery technology is still fairly expensive. So the more range that you can get from a battery pack, the better. But how do you gain range on an EV? It's by making it more efficient. One of the easiest ways to make your EV more efficient is to reduce drag. Now I'm gonna have my buddy Ricky from 2Bit Da Vinci talk to you about drag and its effect on efficiency, specifically with EVs. Ricky, take it away. Hey, what's up, Raj? How's it going? I'm Ricky with Tuba Da Vinci, and I'm here to talk about aerodynamics, in particular, drag, as it pertains to a vehicle moving through the air. So drag is basically the effect of having to move a vehicle through air, which is a fluid, a medium, it's just like water. So if you've ever swam in a pool, you know how hard it is to move through water. Well, air isn't as hard as water, but it is also a fluid. And if you've ever wondered why EVs seemingly obsess about aerodynamics way more than gasoline cars, the reason in a nutshell is because gasoline cars have a ton of energy on board. 15 gallons of gasoline in an internal combustion car is a ton of energy, but they're so wasteful that most of that is just wasted as heat and noise. And only a very little bit of it, about 20 or 30%, actually moves you forward. So as a result, the drag is a much smaller part of the puzzle. That's why companies like Tesla and everybody else obsesses about shaved door handles and aero packages to keep that drag down. So what goes into drag? There's three things. First is the frontal area. So if you kneel down and look at a car, that cross section at its thickest point is basically the amount of car you have to push through the air. The second thing is the drag coefficient. So this is a number of how clever you are with your design of your vehicle to reduce the impact of having to push all that frontal area through the air. So drag coefficient of one is terrible. That means you basically have a rectangle. And a rectangle is really bad for a couple of reasons. First, you have a blunt front, which means that any air hitting it directly head on is just colliding with it and pushing the car back instead of routing it around. And secondly, in the back, being blunt and flat, like an SUV, for example, is also really bad because as the air tries to come back around it, there's a huge area behind it where there's not any air. There's a low pressure region. So this is the same reason why a straw works. As you evacuate the air out of the straw, you have a low pressure region which pulls the fluid up. The third thing is speed. So how fast you're going really matters because the equation for drag is the frontal area times the drag coefficient times the velocity squared. So if you're going 80 miles an hour, your drag is four times higher than at 40 miles an hour. So the first thing you can do if you wanna get better range in your EV, drive slower. So that being said, your wheel choice really matters as well because your average wheels are kind of like big fan blades moving through the air and disrupting that flow. What you wanna have is really laminar flow that sticks close to the car and returns in the back picture like an aircraft because that really matters to an aircraft at 500 miles an hour. So that's where the EVs with really good range have very deliberately designed rims which minimize this disruption. More of a flat surface where the air just passes right through it. All right, so that is a really quick look at aerodynamics. I've got some videos, Raj, maybe you can link them that go into this a little bit more in depth, but thanks so much for listening guys and Raj, back to you. Awesome, thank you so much, Ricky. He always does an amazing job explaining things so that you should definitely give him a follow and check out his YouTube channel. So in regards to my vehicle, I focused on two main things. Number one was to lower my vehicle to reduce drag and to make it more aerodynamic, thus increasing the range. And number two, to get more efficient wheels and tires, which will also help with efficiency and range. Obviously, the goal here is to increase range and increase efficiency of my vehicle. Now, I've been rocking 20-inch tires on my Model 3. They've been amazing. They look amazing, and I love them. But the efficiency of these wheels are just horrible. In fact, in fact, I'm just checking, taking a look at my trip calculator here. Uh, over just shy of 10,000 miles on my 20-inch wheels, 
and my average energy efficiency was 262 watt hours per mile. Now, some of you may say that that's really good. A lot of that was driven during the summer. I wasn't using a lot of heat uh, and that incorporates everything uh, in those 10,000 miles. You see, the reason for that is the bigger the wheel, the less efficient and that's due to rolling resistance. For a tire to be efficient, it needs to have a low rolling resistance. The higher rolling resistance means that your vehicle needs to use more energy to move that wheel, thus less efficient and less battery range. Now, of course, having the bigger wheels have their pros, like they're wider, they're stickier, they have more grip, but I'm not taking my car to the track. I'm not racing it. I don't need that. And I would rather have a smaller wheel and gain back some efficiency than have a wider, bigger, sportier tire. However, I want that without sacrificing the looks. Now, special shout out to Auto R&D here in Fremont. If you're looking to do anything with your vehicle, uh, lowering wheels, tires, all of that sorts, definitely hit them up. They're the ones who took care of me. They got me set up with some iBox springs that overall lowered my car about an inch and a half, which was just enough, not too crazy, but not too light. I didn't want to be avoiding speed bumps and driveways, but I still also wanted to get that lower, more aggressive, more aerodynamic and more efficient stance of the vehicle. They also got me set up with the tires. Now the tires that I got are 19. So I moved down an inch. They're also, uh, not as wide as the 20 inch tires. And these tires are actually the OEM factory tires that Tesla gives you when you order the 19 inch wheels. What's great about them is that they also have the foam insert. So I still retain the reduction in road noise that these tires have by having that foam inside of them. Now these wheels are the hand cooks. They're uh, 235 40s and they're 19 inch wheels. So there's smaller, less rolling resistance, more efficient than the 20s that I had before. Now last are the wheels. The wheels were sent to me by a company called the New Aero. And they're uh, out of Germany and Sweden, uh, but the wheels are actually made in Italy. Beautiful wheels. They actually sent me these out um, because they wanted me to test it out and take a look at them. Now, let me just tell you a brief history about these wheels. Now, these wheels actually help reduce about 9.9% drag because they're moving about 30% less air from the wheels, from your standard wheels. Now I can attest to that because I've been driving on these wheels for about a thousand miles now, and I'm seeing at least a drop of 20 watt hours per mile uh, in, in efficiency. And so while I was able to regain efficiency and gain range on my EV, I did it without sacrificing the look. In fact, I would say, you be the judge, comment down below, but I would say the look is much better now than what it was before. The vehicle is lowered, it looks more aggressive. The 19s don't quite look like 19s because they fill out the wheel well better. They're more aerodynamic. The air actually uh, flows through their blade-like design and it's just beautiful. Now, I also love that the lug nuts for the wheels are hidden. They're hidden behind a machined aluminum disc that's milled with like minimal gaps and it's like a really cool closing mechanism. So you don't really actually see uh, any visible recess or anything of that sort. It's just so sleek and streamlined. Now I went with this smooth stealth look. So I kept that darker color, uh, which matches my Chrome delete. Now these wheels, uh, they make them available in 19s, 20s, 22s. So no matter what 
Tesla you have, you can get it. What's really special about these wheels is that not long ago, they were actually caught on a Model S uh, and they garnished a lot of buzz on Twitter. And what it turned out to be was that Franz was rocking them on his car. These wheels were actually sent to Elon. Somehow, Franz got them, installed them, and was using them. So if Franz approves these wheels, I definitely approve of these wheels. Uh, I've loved them. Everywhere I've gone, people have complimented me on these wheels. They really like these wheels a lot as well. Now, that's of no surprise because back in 2020, the new Aero company actually won the prestigious Red Dot Award for product design. So it comes as no surprise that people admire and actually really like these wheels, as do I. Now, the 21 inch and the 22 inch wheels that they have are milled out of one piece of forged aerospace grade aluminum, whereas the 19 inch wheels that I have are crafted out of a cast. And after the cast is done, they actually mill the surface to achieve the same sharp impression and characteristics uh, that the 21 and 22 forged uh, have. So that's really cool as well. And it's sort of exclusive as they're not been available ever in the US up until now. So yes, I the company sent them out. I told them that, hey, I, I wanna give them a run for it first. I rode a thousand miles without creating a video or really talking about them because I wanted to make sure that they're good before telling you guys. And they're great. I talked to them, they're making and opening up availability in the US starting now. So if you're interested in getting these wheels, I'll, I'll put a code down below, you can just use Tesla Raj, and it should knock off the shipping charge to get them to you. So uh, check them out, I'll put a link to them down below the new arrow. But overall, what I wanted to focus here is that if you have an EV, it's very important that your EV is efficient. And to get efficiency, it's done by tire size, rolling resistance, width of your tires, the stance of your car, how aerodynamic your car is. You know, the future may have no side mirrors because side mirrors, believe it or not, add drag to your car. And so all of that accounted for, if you focus on that, you can actually regain range and make your EV more efficient, which is very important in the EV world. Let me know, have you done anything to your EV to make it more efficient and increase range? Um, what do you think about what I did? I lowered it one and a half inches, new tires, new wheels, we moved down in size. What do you think about my overall stance and look? I'm curious to know what you think and let me know, what are you gonna do? Are you interested in the new era? What do you think about them? You like them, you don't like them? I didn't like them at first, but it grew on me and now I absolutely love them. If you like this video, hit that thumbs up button and again, consider subscribing if you haven't already. I'll catch you guys next time. See ya.